Hi, Mike Aben here with a KSP tutorial. So far in these tutorials, I've stuck to staying in orbit about Kerbin. That is going to change today as we are going to be talking about going to the moon and going to Minmus. And the vessel that is going to, that we are going to use for this is the stock Kerbal X, which comes with the game. This vessel is capable of landing on either the moon or Minmus and returning our brave crew safely back to Kerbin's surface. So, without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. We'll start by putting ourselves into an 80 kilometer equatorial orbit, which is something I talked about back in episode 2. But other than handling the ascent, I am also carefully watching my fuel because, there we go, I got to stage. You see, the Kerbal X here has something called asparagus staging something I haven't talked about yet um, but what it means is that all the engines right now are going but the fuel is only being drained from two of those radial boosters at a time and each time the fuel runs out I have to dump them and the thing to notice is, is that once I dump them the fuel for what's the remaining part of the rocket is completely full here let's watch as we dump our next set and watch the uh, main engine there we go and the fuel on that main engine whoop <laughs> is completely full yeah, asparagus staging is something I will talk about oh I don't know in a future episode I'll also mention that there is a perfectly fine in-game training mission for this, though I'll be talking about some of the finer points that aren't mentioned in that in-game tutorial. Also stick around for Let's Do the Math in the second half of the video, where I'll talk about calculating the Delta V requirements for this mission, and we'll revisit the rocket equation and calculate the total Delta V avail available in the Kerbal X. But for now, let's cut to the completion of our circularization and start talking about getting to the moon. There we go, that'll do it. Okay, we can take a quick look at our vehicle here. Note we still do have the booster attached to it. But let's set up our trip to the moon. So the first thing we gotta do is find it. Oh, there it is, and we'll right click and set it as a target. What we wanna do is raise our orbit, the apoapsis of our orbit, so that it will encounter the moon. But of course, the moon is moving, so we have to sort of aim ahead of the moon. So we'll, we'll put a maneuver around here and start adding some prograde and just start moving up our apoapsis until we see our encounter. Oh, there we go. Now, we can adjust the exact timing of this by grabbing the node. Zoom in a little bit here and moving it back and forth here to give us a better idea of this why don't we select our closest approach to the moon we want to get this periapsis with the moon to be as low as we can uh, it's still pretty high I can see I need to give myself some more prograde the closer you are to the moon at your closest approach the more efficient your capture is going to be However, once you get below about 10 kilometers or so, you run the risk of running into mountains and the like, so we don't want to do that. Just get up. No, I can still see I still need some more prograde. I'm just giving some prograde and then adjusting the timing a bit. Again, looking to get it as close as I can. Just a little bit more. We're getting close to it. Oh, whoa, 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 that's, uh, <laughs> that's nine, I got down to 900 meters. That's a, that's a little too close. So we'll dial this back. Oh, there we go, just over 10 kilometers, perfect. So there we go, there we, that's going to be our maneuver to get ourselves out there. You can also right click on the moon and view your incoming trajectory from the moon like this. Now the moon is moving from left to right on your screen, so you can see we're coming in behind the moon we're gonna go into what's called a prograde orbit the other alternative is to come in in front of the moon in which case you'll end up going around in a retrograde orbit that means against the actual rotation of the moon but as we want to do a landing you're better off it's gonna be more efficient if you go in 
with a prograde orbit because then that way your orbit's going in the same direction as the moon is rotating. There are reasons to go into a retrograde orbit and we'll pick some episode in the future and we'll talk about what those reasons might be. So anyway, with that all done, we're just going to time warp ourselves to our maneuver. There we go, it just stopped. Still got well, about two and a half minutes to go. So let's put ourselves onto the maneuver here. We'll get the, the autopilot to hold it on there for us. And actually, while this is coming around, I mean, take a look at the amount of fuel on that main engine there. You can see I have very little fuel left in the booster, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on it as I burn, and when it goes dry, I'm going to have to be uh, ready to stage that thing pretty quickly. Now, game is telling me I have 20 seconds for the burn, so we'll start the burn a little bit before the halfway point, which obviously is going to be 10 seconds. So we'll just time warp ourselves a little bit closer. There we go. And... Yeah, let's punch it. And again, I am watch, I'm waiting on the space bar, waiting to stage, because I know this isn't going to last too long. And then I'll have to put it on. Wait, there it is. Stage. Start the next engine. Okay, and now we can finish off this burn. The autopilot is nice so that you don't have to worry about actually still pointing the craft while you're doing all that. Okay, we're closing in towards the end. We'll slow down a little bit. And just get it so that it's almost done, not quite done. There we go. Let's go to map view. And we'll uh, get rid of the maneuver here. And we'll lock ourselves onto prograde and select our periapsis with the moon. We'll finish this off just with a few puffs. Again, I want to get in close to about 10 kilometers. Oh, 11 and a half kilometers. That'll be good. All right. But before we head off to the moon, I do want to make sure our solar panel is well exposed here. Again, I didn't build this craft. It doesn't have a lot of solar on it. So I'll right click on this and just look at our sun exposure Last thing I want is to run out of electricity on the way up there. That ought to do. Hey, what, what? Got an extra button here. Aim camera? Oh, neat. Learn something new with 1.2. <laughs> anyway. So we'll get out here to map view. And we'll take a look here at our sphere of influence change. That's where we move from Kerbin's gravitational field into the moon's gravitational field. And we will select that and say warp to here. And the game will just take us out there. Oh, take a look at that debris back there. That's our booster. Now forever orbiting Kerbin. If this were a career mode game, that would drive me nuts. Oh, and here comes the moon coming to say hello, coming to meet us. Okay, our time warping is done. We still have, oh, we still got a few more minutes to go, so we'll time warp that away. Oh, come back. oh, oh there we are. Okay, now we are in the moon's sphere of influence. And our trajectory looks pretty close to being equatorial. I like that. Okay, so the place to perform our capture is here at Periapsis. So what we'll do is we will time warp to just a little bit before Periapsis. And then we're going to be needing to slow ourselves down. So let's, let's uh, select the moon here. We'll center it on the moon so we can get a good view of what is going on. Put it on the retrograde vector because that's going to be the general direction in which we're going to burn and we'll select our periapsis and start time warping ourselves a little bit closer. You can also set up a maneuver node for this but I, I rather like just doing it this way. Okay, under two minutes. Let's get ourselves to a minute here. Yeah. Turn that off. 
and uh, let's get ourselves off the retrograde vector. I'm just going to point it straight to the horizon. So that's really what you're going to need to do. And then uh, I'm going to wait till we're about 30 seconds away from periapsis. And then we'll do ourselves a little bit of a test burn. Get ourselves a little closer. All right, let's burn a little bit here and... Uh, see what happens and oh 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 I'm pushing my periapsis away from me so I'm gonna let it get a little bit closer see this way I get to keep an eye on my periapsis and make sure it doesn't get away on me I find sometimes you do these things and your periapsis starts changing dramatically oh there we go we now have our capture so let's select our apoapsis and this time I will just lock it on the prograde vectors or retrograde vector so all I have to do is think about my throttle control and again I'm, I'm just keeping myself I don't want the periapsis to get too far ahead of me I don't want to pass my periapsis so I'm just adjusting my throttle keeping my periapsis just ahead of me and then that way it's not going to change too much in its altitude and of course what I want to do is get my apoapsis down to about the same altitude and like I said, using a maneuver node is fine. I'm just perhaps a little bit too obsessive about these things. So I'll let, again, my time to periapsis get a little bit closer before I start throttling up again. Ah, but I think that's close enough. So let's uh, see if we can finish this off. Oh, oh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so let's put ourselves back on the normal vector for our solar panels. And take a look. We are now in this nice low orbit about the moon. Perfect from which to do a descent. There's Kerbin hanging prettily off in the distance. So with that done, why don't we revert our launch back to the launch pad and do this again for Minmus. We'll do this one quite a bit faster, but there is something that does make Minmus quite a bit different. Let's scroll out and find Minmus. There it is. We'll set it as a target. And here's the difference. Minmus's orbit is inclined. Specifically, it's inclined at six degrees to Kerbin's equator. Now you could make a potentially expensive correction out in space, but there's a better way to deal with this inclination. First, let's find the Kerbal Space Center on Kerbin's uh, surface, and then we'll scroll out. The moon's orbit conveniently has an inclination of zero. It's right over Kerbin's equator. And the KSC is also on Kerbin's equator, so all we have to do is scroll out some more and then begin rotating our view until we get to the point that we see Minmus's orbit edge on while still keeping the moon's orbit edge on. There we go. And oh wait, it, it works better. It should have Kerbin as the center of our view. Let's adjust this a little bit more. Now right here where the two orbits cross, that is where we want to perform our launch. So all we have to do now is time warp to that. Watch Kerbin going around. Actually, I'll also mention too, if we take a look here, as we're going to be launching in a prograde direction, notice that we need to be launching towards the north, uh, which is up on the screen. Specifically, we need to launch six degrees towards the north of east if we want to match what Minmus's orbit is doing. All right, we're just going to time warp a little bit more. We want to get our ship right in the center of Kerbin there. Oh, I would say that's it. Yep. Let's get this show on the road. We're away. I'm just going to roll about six degrees 
So that way, as I, all I'm doing is pushing the yaw, pushing the D button to move my ship towards the right there. Still have to stage as well, as we do have this asparagus stage to make sure we drop those boosters at the right time. Oh, I can see I, I'm too far towards the north. Notice that north is at the bottom of your screen on the nav ball. I gotta go a little bit more closer to the east line, the 90 degree line. I can tell that by looking at my actual heading number. Um, you know, north is zero, so if I go six degrees north of 90 degrees, which is east, that's 84 degrees, and I can see from my heading, oh, I'm getting better now, but no, I'm about 79 degrees. I should be close. Well, actually, I should be around, I would say, 82, 83 degrees on that heading would be just about perfect. Remember that Kerbin is rotating to the east, so even before you've launched, you already have your prograde vector moving towards the east, so you sort of have to pull it towards the heading that you want. Right now, I'm getting closer. And with those radial boosters gone now, I don't have to worry about staging. So sort of watch it from here, wait for our apoapsis to once again get to 80 kilometers, in which case, at which point, we will shut off our engines. Being just a few degrees off of going directly east really adds very little to this ascent. But doing an inclination change out in space, that would be more expensive. This is definitely the way to do it. Okay, we are getting close. And 80. There we go. Okay. Let's see how we're doing so far. We're looking pretty good, I think. Can I actually, let's check the descending node here. Oh, it's negative 1.2 degrees. So I'm 1.2 degrees off from Minmus's orbit. That's not bad. You can still adjust it while circularizing. And by the time I was done that, I was less than half a degree off from Mimis's orbit. Not that far off from where I was with the moon's orbit. With that set up, doing the transfer to Mimis is now exactly the same as it was for doing it for the moon. So let's cut over to just after entering Mimis's sphere of influence, where I have one more thing to show you. Now this entry trajectory is pretty good, but... You know, it's me. <laughs> I want it better. So we're going to put in a maneuver node up here. And so far in this whole series, you've seen me do nothing but prograde and retrograde burns. So let's play a little bit with the normal and radial parts of these. So I'll just move this so that it's really close to where I am. And then we'll get in here close. We'll focus on to Minmus. Let's see what we can do with this trajectory. So scroll up. I can see I need to pull it towards the south here. So that's anti-normal. So I'm going to pull a little bit or use the mouse wheel really to pull this down. I want to make this as close to equatorial as I can. That's pretty good. A little more there. And now let's select our periapsis. And I want that closer to Minmus. So I'm going to be adjusting a little bit radially in. Just pulling that trajectory a little closer to Minmus. Again, I want it to be eh, around about 10 kilometers or so. There we are. That's pretty nice. I could do this with two separate burns, but combining perpendicular burns like this does make the final burn more efficient. Something we'll definitely take a look at. In a future, let's do the math. So we'll just put it on the node here and we'll select the actual periapsis of our current trajectory. And I'm just burning and I'm looking more at my periapsis than I am at the actual maneuver. And all I'm doing is doing little puffs until I get my periapsis down where I like it. There we go, that's sweet. Okay, get rid of the maneuver. And as far as doing the capture, it is exactly the same as what we did around the moon. And for our next tutorial, we'll get these folks down to the surface and look at how to get them back home. In this Let's Do the Math, we'll look at establishing a Delta V budgets for the missions that you just saw. 
And then we'll look at the rocket equation once again to work out the total delta V that is available to use in the Kerbal X. To work out our budget, we'll use this delta V map, which is available on the KSP wiki. This map is rather set up like a subway map. To get the delta V required for a mission, all you have to do is follow the route to where you want to go and add up the delta Vs along the way. We'll start at Kerbin. According to the map, to get the low Kerbin orbit requires 3,400 meters per second of delta V. Next is our transfer to the moon, 860 meters per second, and then 310 meters per second for the capture. That takes care of what you saw today, but I want to make this a land to return mission. According to the map, it's 580 meters per second to land. We'll go with this number, but a quick piece of advice. Unless you are brilliantly efficient at landing, I'd budget an extra two or 300 meters per second more than this. Okay, so now we're on the surface of the moon and we want to get back. Thankfully, these numbers are all the same in the reverse direction. It's 580 meters per second gets us into low lunar orbit and then another 310 meters per second ejects us from the moon's SOI and sends us back towards Kerbin. It turns out that is all we need. We don't have to burn fuel to lower our cells into a low Kerbin orbit and then land because Kerbin's atmosphere and our parachutes will do that for us. Adding this all up gets 6,040 meters per second. All right, let's do min-miss. Again, 3,400 meters per second for low KO, then 930 meters per second for the transfer. The 340 meters per second represents the maximum you would need to spend for the plane change, but since we dealt with the inclination during our initial ascent, we need not worry about this number. 160 for the capture and 180 for landing, and then of course, those same numbers again to get back to Kerbin. That gives us a total of 510 meters per second. Well, does the Kerbal X have what it takes to get our brave crew home after their Minmus landing? Or are they going to be in need of a rescue? To find out, we're going to use the rocket equation that I derived in episode 4. All we need to work out the delta V for any stage are three numbers. The mass at the beginning of the stage, the mass at the end, and the combined ISP of the engines. The Kerbal X has a total of five stages. I'll number them zero through four, with zero being the final stage. Let's start with stage four. In the VAB, we'll open up the engineer's report and remove the launch clamps as they don't fly with us. We have a total mass of 130.42 tons, as you can see right here. Now, when stage four is done, these two radial boosters will be empty. So to find out what the final mass is going to be, all we need to do is take out all the liquid fuel and oxidizer from these two radial boosters. Now there is a matching one over here on the other side, but you can see that when we drain one of them, we actually drain the other one thanks to the symmetry that was used. Anyway, so we can now see that our final mass is going to be 118.42 tons. We now need the ISP of the engines. The radial engines are LVT45 swivels. We can look over here and see that they have an ISP in the vacuum of 320 seconds. But we have a different engine here as well. So let's get rid of the information about the swivels there and take a look at here. Here what we have is an REM3 mainsail engine and when we take a look at it, it has an ISP of 310 seconds. What we need is their combined ISP and this is given to us by this formula. This formula has a pretty straightforward derivation but I fear this video is getting too long so I'll put it off to another time. The F1, F2, etc. is the thrust of the engines. For the swivels, that's 215 kilonewtons, and it's 1500 kilonewtons for the mainsail. Sticking the numbers into the formula and pushing through a calculator, we get 315 seconds. Don't forget to count all six of those swivel engines. We now plug our numbers into the rocket equation to get 298 meters per second for that stage. 
When this stage is done, we discard these boosters, so we'll just take them off to get the starting mass for our next stage of 112.87 tons. Using the same process as before, we get a final mass of 100.87 tons. With only four swivels now, we have to recalculate the ISP, getting 314 seconds, and plugging into the rocket equation gets us the delta V of 346 meters per second for that stage. It's a pretty simple matter to keep repeating this process for each of the five stages, which yields the following chart. Adding up all the available delta Vs, we get a total available delta V of 6,205 meters per second. Recall that the moon mission's budget was 6,040 meters per second. That would be tight, but entirely doable. However, we left our crew in orbit about Minmus, and the total budget for that mission was 5,010 meters per second, so we have over 1,000 meters per second to spare. We can now be fairly confident that we should be able to get the Kerbal X down to the surface of Minmus and then back to Kerbin. But that's going to have to be for the next tutorial. I thank you for watching and hope to see you then.